who are in love with her, to you who dream of her, to you who expect so much of her, and to you also. Let me tell you a story, I, the wind who have always blown through your land. Twenty-five million years ago, in the center of a large basin enclosed by the rocky embrace of the mountains, when life had not yet given birth to the first of your ancestors, my breath already swept across a humid bardana full of life, which stood majestic, crowning thousands of meters of dust and stone deposited by the age-old activity of vigorous mountain streams and rivers winding across the plains. In this bardana of distant limits, surprising to human eyes and able to traverse the distance of time, life flourished. Remote species of crocodiles, turtles, beavers, large herbivores and tiny rodents found shelter in this land dominated by lakes of clear waters, shaded by the vegetation of the wetlands and the forests. And also here, though hidden within the heart of its own nature, beat the desert, waiting for the fate yearned for by the captive waters. Some small crack through which to slip, and that fate came to be some nine million years ago, giving rise to this, your Bardana. The complex water map that gave it life united in one enormous common watercourse, the Ebro, which in a natural inexorable process began to suck up millions of years of history in the force of its floods, disgorging it into the sea. Time, water, and I, the wind, beating, shaping, creating. To this same Bardano, your Bardano, which you now see shattered into a thousand landscapes that reveal the passing of time, though protected by the green mantle of pines, cypresses, oaks, rosemary, they came those that preceded you, those nameless men and women whose legacy, involuntarily deposited across its vast geography, has waited almost 6,000 years to be revealed to your eyes. Though to you they are nameless, I knew their works, their shelters, their lives. These ancient colonizers, the first shepherds of the Bardanos, forming small itinerant groups along the natural routes offered by this jagged map of stone, engaged in the arduous task of survival. The tangible testimonies of their existence are none other than the products of their hands, of their minds, and also of their souls. Fragments of hard rocks which through necessity, experimentation, and wisdom gave birth to tools, decorations, weapons, rough clay vessels of non-existent profiles, and others beautifully harnessed, which speak to us of distant routes along which not only objects, but also ideas traveled. And their souls, their souls, too, have bequeathed to you testimonies of earth and stone. For 2,000 years, the Bardanus nurtured generation after generation of shepherds. And for a further thousand years, in an ancient era, the Bronze Age, I saw their children and their children's children put down roots in this land 
I saw them raise houses, streets, entire villages standing atop impressive hills from where they exercised their power as hierarchical centers controlling the entire Bardana. In the course of the second millennium before Christ, I witnessed decisive changes in their ways of life. The attraction that the land exercised over these men, the security it offered them, the power it gave them, anchored them once and for all to it. The need to exist and prosper, to extract their substance from the Bardana, gave rise to a rudimentary, inexpert, as yet innocent desire to dominate the pulses of the seeds, the fruits of nature itself. Farmers and shepherds, but also hunters and gatherers, immersed in small humanized landscapes beyond the limits of which stretched thousands of hectares of virgin, mature, generous forest. For centuries, Nature's stubborn capacity for regeneration maintained the delicate balance between man and the environment until I saw the desert emerge from the depths of the earth with renewed force after hundreds of years of felling, burning, grazing, and sowing. The exhaustion of the landscape ruled over by man became clear, initiating the inexorable process of abandonment of the weary lands of the interior of the Bardana to the benefit of the new horizons of prosperity that the fertile banks of the Ebro promised. Though the pastoral soul of the inhabitants of the Bardana would always remain here, timidly, among the scrub and grass that fed their herds. The generous map of furrows chiseled by time heard distant voices from the peninsula from Central Europe. Voices that spoke of turning the mineral into iron, stone into lime, resin into fish, clay into vessels. The echoes of Rome, which arrived stripped of the sound of trumpets, merged in a symbolic culture of prudent restraint until the downfall of the empire once and for all silenced the voices of your landscape. And for 700 years in your desert, the silence was absolute. Just a few centuries before your voice, your voices were heard. The rugged, bare, jagged Bardana was a land at the edge. The 13th century of our era covered the impregnable summits shaped by my fury with castles and walls, sturdy bastions to defend the borders of the emerging kingdom of Navarre. This desert, land of shepherds, was also a land of shelter, of traps, of legend. Time, water, man, the north wind, beating, sweeping, shaping, changing. And you, children of this land, continue to tread its skin with your steps, continue to shape its destiny with your hands. For beneath this rough mantle of the infinite crossed line, 